As the climate warms, the amount of rainfall will likely change. Will it rain more? Less? Fewer, but more intense storms? And what will those changes mean 20 to 40 years from now along the Gulf Coast from Brownsville to the Florida Keys? If temperatures in Brownsville continue to rise and the amount of rainfall tumbles, will the mangroves give way to coastal succulents? How will it affect fish habitat or coastal erosion? What if rainfall increases? And how do we even prepare for those changes? A time machine would be useful. Well, a professor at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley has devised a way to get a look at what might be coming. And while it's not an actual time machine, his series of structures will alter the environment in small areas so we can see how they react to changes in rainfall. Basically, Dr. Christopher Gabler, professor of environmental sciences at UTRGV, will allow us to fast forward. This research will give us a more mechanistic understanding of how and why and when plant functional groups will change in coastal wetlands. And this will allow us to better manage coastal lands and better respond to changes in climate. And it may even allow us to mitigate some of the changes that we expect. Basically, the project is looking at changes in rainfall patterns and how these rainfall pattern changes might affect plant communities. These changes in plant communities mean a change in ecosystem services. Ecosystem services are just basically benefits provided by an ecosystem. Things like habitat. In wetlands, this means a place for fish to live, basically, and, and it provides an enhancement for fisheries, which, of course, a lot of coastal communities depend on. Another ecosystem service provided by wetlands is erosion protection, and so when you see a shift in plants, you're obviously going to see a difference in erosion. Nutrient cycling and waste treatment is one that's often overlooked that is also provided by wetlands. Wetlands are really great at cycling nutrients as well as storing carbon. Here in the valley, we're mostly algae mat and mangrove dominated. If we're going to see less rainfall patterns here, we may see fewer plants in general. And so if you lose these plants, you're going to lose ecosystem services. So we're faced with two problems. The first is that we don't actually know whether we're going to get wetter or drier. In many parts of the Gulf of Mexico, we know which direction rainfall will take and approximately how much rainfall would change. In South Texas, however, the models do not agree on whether we're going to get more or less rainfall. The second problem is that we don't know exactly what these changes in rainfall are going to mean for the coastal wetland plant communities. So we hope to find the answer to some of these questions by simulating changes in rainfall in coastal wetlands in South Texas, where transitions between functional groups are most apparent. So we are catching and redistributing rainfall using a series of rainout shelters, which include roofing panels, gutters, and hoses that allow us to move rainfall within a controlled area and don't require any electricity. And this let us build them anywhere, including several critical areas, like an endangered whooping crane habitat in Aransas. So now we're able to monitor how plants change given these different amounts of rainfall. Not only can we see how plant communities will change, but we'll be able to disentangle mechanistically how both the environmental tolerances of different plant species and the competitive or beneficial relationships between those species will influence the overall outcomes of these changes in climate. We expect to see some changes in the first one or two years, but bigger changes will probably take three or four. At that point, we'll have enough data to do a more complete analysis and refine our current models, which will help us better manage the land and our coastal natural resources, and possibly mitigate some climate change impacts. Ultimately, this work will help both our human societies and the ecological communities that we depend upon to remain sustainable in the face of future environmental change.